Okay, good morning. I'm John Coonrod with Rogers Corporation. I'm going to be talking about uh, bonding materials uh, that are used in microwave uh, multilayer printed circuit boards. And uh, this is a topic that's uh, on the surface, one of those topics that you get into in the microwave industry where uh, it looks pretty simple. You wouldn't think there's that much to it. When you get in the details, you get quite a surprise sometimes. So I'm going to do a pretty good job here of going through uh, kind of a generic overview of it. But as for the details, I just don't have time for that. So I'm going to give you more than anything else, a good thought process, a good way to think about this, a lot of things to uh, consider. I'm going to try to stick to this agenda. Uh, due to timing, I'm probably going to zip through the slides pretty quick. Apologize if you need more details, and please catch me afterwards. But what I plan on doing is the first few slides, I'm going to talk about uh, how to build a, a strip line circuit, a three layer, and then also a five layer. And it's going to be a real quick overview, very basic. And then after that, I'm going to talk about some of the properties that are really critical to consider for the bonding materials. And then finally, give you some examples of prepregs and laminates, different combinations for different reasons. So to begin with, uh, to build a three layer strip line circuit, uh, this is a very simple flow diagram and then a pictorial form of that. So you start off with a copper clad laminate, which is the uh, copper substrate copper. And the uh, fabricator will etch the circuit pattern on one layer and then they will apply bonding materials above that and also a copper foil, laminate it all together. The lamination cycle is uh, basically taking this material, holding it under pressure, uh, ramping it up to a high enough temperature to get the bonding materials to become active and link and cross-link and cure. And then you get the strip line circuit essentially. Now, of course, there's more to the story, but that's a quick overview. Uh, this is kind of a 3D animation that I attempted. We'll see if it works or not, but it's the same type of story of how you put together a very simple strip line where you take a copper clad laminate and you etch the uh, signal layer and then you, uh, well, I guess it's not going to work. You just have to trust me. So I'll move on to the next slide. Apologize for that. The, uh, the next slide is uh, looking at a more complicated uh, rigid board, and that is a five conductive layer, five layer board. And just to make things simple, we're going to start off on the far left picture of the strip line that we already built, and then just basically add prepreg or bonding layers above and below, and then a copper foil top and bottom, laminate it all together, and then go through the etching process to etch away what you don't want. And in this case, what you get is a five layer board that is a strip line buried with a microstrip top and bottom. Now, some of the material properties that are uh, interesting and should be considered uh, are pretty vast. So here I'm just going to go through uh, some of the more obvious things. Uh, there's a lot of different bonding materials, lots of different prepregs to choose from. Uh, most of these prepregs have a dielectric constant or epsilon and sub r uh, relative uh, permittivity of around 2 to 4.5. There are a few exceptions. Uh, some of the issues with some of the prepregs are thermal issues and mostly related to CTE, the coefficient of thermal expansion. In other words, how much the material will shrink or grow uh, due to temperature changes. And I'll talk about that in more detail. And then also there's a number of prepregs out that are pretty friendly to circuit fabrication. And there's some trade-offs sometimes. Some of the things that are friendly to circuit fabrication are not so good for electrical performance and vice versa. And then uh, finally, there's uh, some of the prepregs are thermoplastic prepregs and they can remelt and you got to be careful of that. I'm going to talk about that in a little more detail later. Uh, this is a slide that's really meant to be kind of a generic uh, view of a trade-off between losses and um, some of the other issues such as thermal issues or circuit fabrication issues. And this is very generic but it's a, a good general trend that most of the prepregs and the bonding films that are very good for um, High, for very uh, low loss, extremely low loss prepregs, a lot of times they have thermal issues where they have high CTEs and also they can be problematic in building a circuit. So that's one of the trade-offs you think about. Another one is the low loss uh, prepregs or bonding materials. A lot of them are actually pretty good for circuit fabrication and I'm going to talk a little bit more about those in detail. What I'm considering to be low loss is a dissipation factor about 0.003 to 0.004. And then finally, uh, a prepreg that is used probably more often than you might think in microwave printed circuit board is something like FR4 that is very high loss. But the thing about these FR4 prepregs is they've been uh, developed and evolved over the years, so they're very robust in circuit fabrication processes. And they do have some advantages. But again, the trade-off in this case would be very high loss. Now, the copper selection can be extremely important too, of course. And if you're just looking at a good bonded uh, multilayer, then what you'd be looking at is a copper with a pretty rough surface because that's going to give you more surface area to bond to. And that's good for bonding and adhering. But the problem is a rough copper surface is going to cause problems 
with uh, conductor losses and high, higher insertion loss. That's also dependent on circuit geometry. Some circuit geometries could realize that issue more so than others. And then the copper foil can have an impact on reliability as well. This is a table that is uh, showing some of the more common prepregs and bonding materials used in our industry. Uh, you can see that the dielectric constant ranges anywhere from about 4.5 down to 2.1. Dissipation factor is around 0.001 for the lowest one, which is FEP film. And it goes up to about uh, 0.018 for FR4, and that's actually a high performance FR4, where some FR4 is even higher than that. Now, the, uh, the categories off the side here were uh, robust soldering and plated through hole reliability. That's kind of subjective, but it's just from years of experience with working with these materials. And uh, just for instance, looking at the 3001 bonding film, that's actually a thermoplastic bonding film, and it does melt. And that's the intent as you're bonding the circuit together. You take the, uh, the circuit materials up to the bonding temperature, which is a melt temperature, and it basically melts and you fuse the material together. And that's fine for making the circuit with the bonding film of the 3001. The issue is later when you have to do solder and assembly. And then you have to get these elevated temperatures again. And if you go above the melt temperature of that 3001, the circuit will fall apart basically and you got a problem. So the thermoplastic materials like 3001, you have to be mindful of that. And the FEP is also a thermoplastic, but it's a very high melt temperature. So it's typically a temperature that's higher than soldering. So you do not have the issue with the soldering as you do on the 3001. Now the 4000 materials, the 4450, those are prepregs that have been around for some time. Uh, those are thermal set materials and they do not have a melt temperature. So after they're cured and the circuits all put together and you take them up to a soldering temperature, they do not melt, they don't get softer, they remain the way they are, which is very good for solder uh, robustness and also for plated through hole. And then finally the bottom one, 2929, is a new bond ply that we have and uh, that's a thermal set and it offers uh, a lot of good thermal set type of properties for being very solder resistant and good plated through hole, but also it's one of the lower loss prepregs as well. And here's kind of a quick example, actually six examples of the thought process for juggling some of these different characteristics for a strip line. So a strip line circuit, and if you look at what the concern is, the first one, I'm basically saying the strip line circuit has a concern of just loss, period. That's the only thing you're worried about. So if you just went extremely low loss, what you'd use for the laminate would be the lowest loss laminate we have, which is 5880. And then you'd use the bonding film that is also the lowest loss, which would be FEP. And then you'd use a copper that is the smoothest, which is rolled copper or rolled rot copper. That's going to give you the lowest loss by far. And then if you look at a strip line circuit and you're looking at just uh, low loss and also circuit fabrication is an issue, now you probably want to use a different material. The 4000 materials are a thermal set material and they are much more robust to the uh, circuit fabrication process. They have a very low CTE, so they can handle the soldering, the multiple lamination cycles, things like that. So the 4000 materials, the uh, 4003 laminate and 4450 prepreg with the standard ED, that's going to give you a circuit that's very robust for circuit fabrication and also relatively low loss. So these are kind of the, the juggling that you may do with some of these properties as you're looking at uh, different applications. In the case of a five layer that we were talking about earlier, this is a buried strip line with micro strips on the outside. You can build this in a lot of different fashions and here I've showed four different ways you can do this. The upper left is really using a lot of prepreg layers and one laminate layer and what you're going to get out of that is a circuit that really has properties more related to the prepreg. And then you can see some other uh, variations of this. This is kind of a mix of uh, laminate and prepreg properties, same with this. And then the bottom right is a uh, multi-layer. It's really more geared toward the laminate properties. So mostly using laminate, a little bit of prepreg to stick it together, but the circuit itself is going to behave more like the properties of the laminate. Now looking at the construction of the circuit uh, that is really geared more toward prepreg properties, uh, of course the one thing you really want to be mindful of is that the prepreg that you're using is friendly to the circuit fabrication process. And 3001 and FEP are good bonding films, but whenever you try to apply them up into many layers like this, they do have a CTE issue. And that CTE issue can be a problem for the circuit fabrication and later in soldering. So the 3001 and FEP would probably not be a good choice here. You probably want something that's more thermal set like the 4450B or F or maybe even our 2929. Now the construction that is more dominated by the laminate properties, this is usually chosen because of consistency. And that is the laminates are typically more consistent in properties than the prepregs. And that's because of the way that they're made. The laminates are made in the same process always from the laminator. The prepregs, when they are laminated in a circuit form, 
The prepreg is made the same, but the issue is that they go to a fabricator and each fabricator has their own process. So the properties of that prepreg could be slightly different from one fabricator at another. So in this case, sometimes this uh, type of configuration is chosen because the laminate has properties that are much more consistent. Uh, now a uh, construction that's kind of a mix between laminate properties and prepreg properties. Uh, in this particular case, I've made an example of uh, a circuit where the microstrip circuits top and bottom would have uh, very low loss needs, so extremely low, low loss, and the strip line layer that's buried in the middle is less critical. And uh, what you could use in that case would be the 58880 laminate uh, for the outside layers for the microstrip top and bottom. That's going to give you by far the lowest loss. And then you could build a strip line on the inner layer with the 4350 and the 4450 materials, which is the thermal set, and they have low CT, and they're very robust for soldering. And the issue with the 5880, extremely low loss, is very good electrically, but it does have a higher CTE. What's nice about using the 4000 materials in the middle there, that kind of offsets that because it has a much better CTE and better thermal properties. So now the composite of this circuit is uh, much more robust for circuit fabrication and for soldering and uh, any kind of thermal exposure. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the next construction is, again, another mix of properties between prepreg and uh, laminate. And this one, I've taken the example of saying that the strip line circuit that's a buried strip line is now very critical for electrical losses and the microstrip circuits top and bottom are less critical. And there could be some cost constraint on this example. So what I decided to do with this was again use our uh, 5880 for the laminate for the strip line circuit and then use the bonding film of FEP. So that's gonna give you the lowest electrical loss. And of course, if you wanted, we have other materials. It could be 6002, there's other materials that could be used as well for the very low loss. But uh, building up the strip line that way gives you the extremely low loss of the strip line layer. And then using the 4450 prepregs top and bottom, that is going to be uh, a little better for cost because prepregs are typically cheaper than laminate. It also brings in the attributes of the 4000 materials being more stable for thermal. Again, the strip line is going to be using materials FEP and 5880 that are less stable for thermal, such as soldering. But being capped top and bottom with the 4450 prepreg, is a benefit to uh, offset that because the 4450 prepregs are much more stable for CTE and other thermal issues. And then uh, I put together an insertion loss curve that uh, just has a few prepregs on there, more to show you the differences than anything else. The, uh, the blue curve is actually the insertion loss uh, of the uh, FR4. It's actually a high performance FR4. And you can see that's a pretty lossy material. And then the next step up is the uh, red curve. That's our 4450F prepreg. So you can see there's quite a big difference there. And then above that, the green curve is our 2929. That prepreg is uh, lower loss as well. Again, pretty big difference. And if I were to put FEP on here, um, that would probably be much, much lower. It'd be up in this range. So I know I buzzed through that pretty quick. Um, what I was trying to do is give you more of the thought process more than the details. And uh, if you have questions, then maybe I can answer them here or uh, feel free to come by our booth at uh, booth 2902 and we'll help you if we can.